For this one we're just going to create a new project and to make it run really well on the simulator I'm going to do it with a OS X application of type game. Give it a product name, I'm going to call mine Let There Be Light. The language will be Swift and the game technology will be Sprite Kit. Okay, so if we come into the game scene, let's clean all this up. We'll leave the did move to view and the mouse down. I'll just make this text bigger so it's easier to see. And we're going to add in mouse dragged as well. Okay, so first I'm going to start by creating the background that we're going to use that will sit behind our light. This will be a let background equal to SK sprite node and this will be an image named Moss. You'll find these files attached with this video. So I have two files here, there's moss.png and moss.n. The PNG file is our nice mossy landscape, while the moss.n contains a normal map. And you should be able to see here how these line up, and how some of these sticks are also shown in the normal map. Okay, so if we drag both of these files into our images.xc assets folder, you can see that they appear there. Now because we're just testing this out, I'm not going to add in our 2x and 3x images. Okay, for the size, I'm just going to give it a CG size. And both of these images are square, so I'm going to just set the x and y to both be equal to the height of the screen, because I know that's a smaller size of the screen. So if it's set to that, it should just fit neatly in. Give it an anchor point in the center with our CG point of 0.5 and 0.5. For the position, we want it to be the center of the screen. So this will be self size width divided by 2 and self size height divided by 2. Z position, negative 1. This will make sure that it is definitely in the background. Add child, background. And just build and run to see how that looks. Okay, so we have our texture sitting in the middle of the screen. Let's keep going. And now I want to make a SK light node. And I'm going to want to change this over time, so I'm just going to add it up in the instance variables area. So that's just within the class itself. Okay, so I'm just going to give the light source a category bit mask. If you're thinking back to SK physics, then yes, this does mean something very similar to that. Fall off, I'm just going to sign that to zero for now. This just affects how the light changes further away from the light source itself. Now I'm just going to copy in a bunch of colors here. So there's three different types of light colors that you need to worry about. So there's ambient light, this will be light just about everywhere that your light source isn't. So if you want to make it dark, like almost night time, this here is pretty good. So I brought everything down to about 0.3. If you wanted to have a late afternoon tinge, you might want to take down the blue a little bit more than that. And light color. So this is the color of the light source itself. And then shadow color. So this is the color of the shadow and any other shadows that are produced from this light source. And of course we need a position and to add it to the scene. Now when you build and run, absolutely nothing changes at all. So why is this? Well, remember we gave it a category bit mask. So now we have to tell our background that it is affected by this category. So I'm going to add in here lighting bit mask equal to 1, shadow cast bit mass. We don't want this background to cast a shadow because it's it's the furthest back most object so it should not cast a shadow. So I'm going to leave that as 0. And shadow bit mass, so can it have shadows cast on it? Yes it can, so I'm going to leave that at 1. And now when I build and run, there you go, we have a light on top of it. Now I'm just going to come down to these functions, mouse down and mouse dragged, and add in light source dot position equal to the event location and node. So anywhere that you click or drag the mouse on the screen, it will now move the light source. 
Okay, so now as I drag that around, that looks pretty good. However, our background kind of looks a little bit like wallpaper. It's definitely a flat surface. There's no definition in it that changes with the light source. So this is where our normal maps come into play. There's a few different ways you can bring in a normal map. So the first one I'm going to show you is just using the externally generated normal map. So background.normalmap equal to the SK texture with the image named Moss N. There we go, that's a lot more definition and as I move the light around you can see how the shadows and the bright parts change. And this will work fine for a lot of surfaces, but for this one I think it's a little bit too strong. It looks a little bit crazy as you move the light around. If it had a static light then it might look pretty good, but if you have a moving light this might be a little crazy. So I'm just going to try a different way. This changes to our background texture and texture by generating normal map. This is an internal function of SK texture that allows you to generate a normal map from the current texture. Okay, now as I move the light around, that's pretty good for an automatically generated light map, but still a little bit crazy. I just want to tone this down a lot so that it's not really affected by light this harshly. So what I'm going to do is start with my texture by generating normal map again, but now say with smoothness, give that a value of 2, and contrast, give that a value of 0.2 as well. Okay, now that's been toned down a lot, and I like this now, it looks fairly natural. Notice when I click up here in the corner, that all the lighting in the scene does not drop below any certain level. What I want to do is have it that the further you are away from the light, the darker it gets. So I'm just going to change this fallout value to 0.5. Now when I click up in this corner again, you can see that it's gradually getting a little more dark as you go. And you can play around with this value a lot. This is really cool in roguelike or dungeon games. If you just want the player to be able to see a certain diameter around where they're standing. You can play around with these colors as well and get some pretty crazy effects. Okay, now what I want to show you next is how shadows work. So I'm just going to add in here a box. Notice that when I brought it in I use image named and also normal mapped equal to true. This is just generating a standard normal map using the texture by generating normal map function that we used earlier. And on some textures this will work really well. You've really just got to experiment. And you'll find that on some you can just generate one and it will work great. On others you'll have to go into another program to generate your normal map or change the smoothness and contrast yourself. Take note that when you are generating normal maps this way as well, it's using up GPU processing time so where possible, you really want to generate your normal maps in advance. Okay, so this tile one, I'll just bring this into here. You'll find this file available as well. It's just some tiles. Okay, so position, I'm just going to put it at, at 350, 350. Z position one, so it is on top of the background. And opt into all the lighting and shadow bit mass. And add it to the scene. Okay, so as I move the light source around my scene now, you can see how this shadowing changes. This shadowing is pretty intense. You can dial that down by changing the alpha channel of your shadow cast for the light source. And notice as I go over the top of the box itself, how well that the light maps work with the surface. The reflections just look just right. I'm really happy with the way this looks. It's amazing to get this sort of quality out of just 2D light rendering. And even when you're off the side of the box, all the lighting and shattering works great. So there you go, that's how you use light sources in your game to enhance the experience even further.